All right, so I'm not gonna fall off the couch tonight because I have different shorts on. They're not that slippery. Anyways, I was saying that I played laying on my back at the Roxy. We used to all come out in coffins. The second show, I flipped over the coffin backwards and I kept playing because it was bass, you know. Riding one string anyways with a... So, you know, there's an example of me playing on my back the other day when I was like this on the couch, kept playing, right? Kind of pretty good. Uh, you know, I don't claim to be a great guitarist. I claim to be a guitarist learning how to play without feeling in his fingertips, which to me is pretty good. Anyway, then I was saying I only played two, two or three shows with Fatal Attraction before I quit. And uh, I think they stopped doing everybody in the coffin after that time because it was just too much stuff on stage. And the guy that took my place, Gary Scott, I think that's what his name was. He he passed away. He's he's gone. He died of brain cancer about a month or two ago. And I found out through my friend who found out through a couple of friends that you know, accidentally knew him, and they're like, why do you have pictures of Fatal Attraction all over your wall? You were never in that band. Michael D. was the bass player, and he's like, no, I was in it for a few months when he quit. So, for all of you Gary Scott people out there, he's gone. So there you go. So here, here's our second of silence for Gary. Because I didn't really know him, but when I found out he was dying... I reached out to him through Facebook and I apologized for the band for the way they acted because none of them were able to get to him and none of them tried to trade it and I, I, I apparently I don't know I hope he did because that was his last thing is he could not forgive Trey I mean this guy's dying of brain cancer and the only thing he can't forgive in his entire life is Trey punching him. That's how he got him out of the band. They wanted me back in, and this guy, he, he didn't get it. He wore spandex, and he had a cape, and he had the... It looked like a guy dressing up for Halloween with a bass, and it was way up here. <clears throat> it was because of the strap, because I it was stuck with a few of the bases too that they'd hand me until I actually bought my own bases which were cool and I wore them low Thunderbird and the BC Rich and all that so you know he quite didn't get it and they wanted to you know go in a more heavy direction and he didn't he was more of a progressive bass player I guess and wanted to do a lot of things and they didn't want that so they we got to get, you know, me back because, one, it's my band anyways. I named the band. I had the idea for the friggin' image. It was all me. Now, Johnny did make the fangs because he was trained to do that in his little school he went to for makeup. That's enough blabbering. So, I was listening to Ace Freely Soul album, 78, first one. And I had this song stuck in my head, Ozone. Ozone. It's a cool song. And this guitar, I can't play it right because it's tuned down a whole step. So I'm just going to fake it like I usually do anyways. So let's see if I can just fake it. I don't even know if I'm going to start with the opening chords because it's not right on this. And I don't know what it would be. Because I got this... The chorus, I think, I got. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Thank you. 